What's your badge number? Badge yeah, number. That says name. 3K12. Okay. Now, what's your name? I'm not making any statements. You're the one driving up and down the street on the motorcycle? Uh, I was on my gas bicycle. Okay, that's a gas powered vehicle. You have to have a driver's license. Um, no, you don't. Yes, you do. Not when it's 50cc and you have a permit for it. Well, you've just witnessed how a 15 year old destroys police officers. However, that was just a small piece of the heated debate that lasted almost 35 minutes, during which this young man emerged as the victor by calmly shaming half the police station with his knowledge. On September 29th, 2019, the police received a report about a man named Michael Franchek had a dispute over his neighbor about his 15 year old son, who was named Jack, who was riding around the neighborhood with his motorbike and the police immediately went to the location and upon questioning the neighbor found out that Michael allegedly had a weapon tucked under his belt when the officers arrived at the front door of Franchek's house this would be the outcome can I help you hello are you uh Michael hi uh, can I help you something yeah uh, we're here about a and your name uh, officer Rodriguez uh, first name Jim Jim how are you Jim can, can and I... your name please sure. sorry badge number that? Badge number, okay. please. Let, let's go ahead and talk about the incident that you had out here a few minutes I ago. Don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Just step down here for me. No, thank yeah. You. No, no. Hey. Now you just saw the moment that changed the course of this police intervention. After this, Michael began to struggle with the officers who were trying to forcibly remove him from his house. During this, they used tasers before handcuffing him and arresting him. From this moment on, everything that you see was filmed by the 15 year old Jack, who bravely defended his father. This is unbelievable. No, I know. This is they unbelievable. They walked in the house without a search warrant. This is unbelievable. Okay. It's all on film. Get my camera. It's on my phone, too. It's on now. my phone. He, the whole thing is on film. The whole thing is on film. Jack, follow me and record. Okay. Follow me and record. Okay. Give us space. I'm not... Give us space. Okay. No, What's your space? Things. What's your space? Jack, Jack, record the whole thing. Oh, does this look like enough space? The police get a tip that someone might have a weapon, especially after a dispute or an argument. They will investigate it to ensure public safety. Now focusing on the house entry, an individual has a fourth amendment right, or to be more specific, protection from unreasonable searches and seizures in their home. Generally, police can't enter anyone's home without a warrant or consent. But there's something called exigent circumstances, which refers to the situation and demands immediate reaction. And thus may justify certain actions by officers that would usually require a warrant. There are exceptions to the Fourth Amendment warrant requirement under the U.S. Constitution. The validity of the circumstances in this case would depend on the specifics of the situation and could be challenged in court. I didn't resist. I know. I didn't do it. You know. Look, See, look. he acknowledged that I didn't resist, Jack. Yeah, I have it on video. I didn't resist. Well, we asked you to stop, right? I did. I didn't do anything yeah. against your instructions. You came. This yeah. guy came into my house without a warrant, without any probable okay. cause. Let me just talk for a second. I said, I don't know anything, and he tackled me in my hey, house. He recorded the whole thing. This hey, guy is out of control. Me. Okay. What's hey, your badge? What's, what's your name? Step back. I'm look, not, look, 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 he I'm just touched me. You can record all you want, but you're one. stepping back right now. This guy, I'm hey, back. Hey, 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 don't back. touch me. Stop harassing me. We're just trying to, we're just I'm videoing this. You can, please get out of my personal space. No. Yes. You're, you're not going to, you're not going to interfere with what we're doing. Space. This is my property. Please you're not going to interfere with an arrest. I'm chill. I've been chill. You can record all you want, but you're not going to get close to it. I'm on my property. Move out of my personal space. I'm going to stand right here. This is my personal square. Please move. I'm going to stand right here. Please move. You're in my personal space. No. What's your name? Yeah, I do not need to give you that. Yeah, you do. Jack, For what no, reason? Jack, don't do because you're involved I know. In this. No, I'm, I'm involved with this, yes. But this guy no. threatened me and called the cops on you. And what's your what's your badge number? What's your name? What's your badge number? Badge Jack, number. That says name. 3K12. Okay. Now, what's your name? I'm not making any statements. You're not making any statements? Nope. Okay, I have the right to identify you. You understand okay. that, right? Then you can search up my face and you can search up my record. Okay. Okay. Well, you're going to sit tight for a minute. You're okay. not going anywhere. I can go in my house if I want. No, Am I detained? You're detained. For what reason? For what, that guy threatening to... me? Why isn't that guy going to jail? That guy threatened to beat me in his ass. So that's, why are you guys arresting him? That's not the why are you tagging? Yeah, he can yeah, just lie. Jack. Yeah. It's clear to all of us that Jack has a very good understanding of the law and knows his rights. And while also the way he behaves towards officers is very good because he achieves what he wants without giving them the reason to react negatively. But now let's take a look at the police's behavior 
it's evident that they are aware that the whole situation is a bit blown out of proportion and that they reacted inappropriately. The camera even caught one of the officers telling Michael that, I know, when Michael stated that he didn't resist. Officer Rodriguez, who led the arrest, which also resulted in this chaos, is clearly quite nervous and at one point is even aggressive towards Jack. And let's all remember that Jack is only 15 years of age and the only threats to the police are Jack's vast knowledge and his phone. Step back. Do not step forward. What did hey, I just tell please you? Please get out of my space. I do not have okay, to. You cannot I'm... interfere with what we're doing. I'm not interfering when I'm on my don't, property. Don't step towards the car. I'm not. Then move you out of my way. You did step towards the car. I told okay. you not to. Hey, hey, hey. Stay back. I'm going in my house. Stay back. I'm going in. If you try and come past me, you're going to go on the ground face first. Do you understand okay, me? Okay, and then I'm going to file a complaint against you. Go grab your camera. Yes. I'm allowing you to do that, but you cannot walk in my house. Okay. Bye. When talking to or interacting with children, officers should really talk and walk with great caution. Threats especially the ones that can cause physical harm, like the one made by Mr. Rodriguez, are quite problematic, both legally and ethically. If Jack felt threatened, the officers could potentially face legal consequences, and use of force, including a gentle push, may be justifiable. And this means police can't use force merely because someone is recording them, because in the US, citizens generally have the First Amendment rights to record the police and officers perform in their usual duties in public spaces as long as the recording doesn't interfere with the officer's duties or endangers anyone. Now finally police question Jack about the misunderstanding and the alleged motor vehicle that caused all of this chaos. I have three cops on me and I'm 15 years old because you guys intruded my house. So you were the one driving up and down the street on the motorcycle? Uh, I was on my gas bicycle. Okay, that's a gas powered vehicle. You have to have a driver's license. Um, no, you don't. Yes, you do. Not when it's 50cc and you have a permit for it. But we tried to come okay. here to ask a question and figure out what was going on because what we got told is a gun was involved in this incident. So we're no going to take this a little no bit. No gun was involved, not okay. at all. We I don't know why you have to. We don't know that when we We don't know here. that. That's I know. What... That's what I'm saying. I so understand that. Come, yes, okay? I totally understand okay? that, but you can't just tackle him. But when he's told to stop, he has to stop. That's a lawful command by an officer. We can get physical. Okay. But you can't just come in the house without yes, a... We have can. to control this situation. Do you yes, have a search warrant? We don't need a we don't need search warrant. Yes, you do. Divide. You, you might want to go to school and learn the law. I already you know the law. No, you don't. Okay. We're okay. Not, we're not going to argue. Okay. okay. Please don't so, talk to me, okay. so I'm get out of my way. Okay. This is my case. It's your case? I'll talk to you as much as I want. Okay. Well, I'm not going to respond to you. You don't have to respond to me, but I can talk to you. Have a good day. Jack explains how the whole argument between his father and neighbor started, which to summarize it, Jack was riding around the garden or the front part of the house, which irritated the neighbor. Then in an act of trying to scare Jack to stop, the neighbor started threatening him and that's when Jack's father got involved, telling the neighbor to not get in his face or he would have to defend himself. That was basically it. There were no weapons involved. Um, we walked back inside and uh, yeah, and now you guys are here coming in the house and I don't know why he's detained I don't know why he's getting arrested well that's I'm not gonna get into that and talk to you about that it's well a, you can because he's my dad and it was on my property but okay well it's not your property it's your dad's but we're, we're not gonna get in that okay actually that, technically a, it is because I'm underneath his guardian so okay but we're not gonna get into that okay? okay I'm just trying to find out where you know what we're trying to get situated okay is what took place between you guys being okay and I'm filing a just, what's caught on him because he okay. touched me when I did nothing. Okay. Do you, I mean, want, he, do you want to have a, like a so actual conversation? Where, where is he going? To Summit County Jail. Jail. So, okay. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm more willing to talk to you, but I'm not going to play the stupid games. Okay. You kind of are. Cause... Okay. We're done. Okay. okay. Can right. I have the case number right now? Huh? Can I have uh, yeah. where? You can give it to your dad. No, no, right now. Not... I need to hear. Okay. That... Tell you what. You can go in the house. You can do whatever, but we're done with you guys. Okay. Yeah. You guys aren't being cooperative. We'll leave it, at it clearly seems that Officer Rodriguez is quite bothered by the fact that Jack talks a lot and knows a lot. As already mentioned, there was no weapons involved in this entire situation and there wasn't even a physical altercation, so Michael was unlawfully treated as some sort of threat. It's crazy how Jack is capable of silencing every officer that's around him. And if you look closely at their body language and reactions, you'll see that Jack with his knowledge and verbal skills puts them in a very uncomfortable situation. Let's see what else Jack will find out from the officers when he starts questioning him about the weapons you know i don't know if there's an issue going on with neighbors and like 
with um, your dad and that guy. I, I don't know what's going on. I this is the first confrontation, first time we've ever seen him, met him, heard of him, okay. looked at him. Like, uh, okay. and the first thing I hear is him saying that bicycle is illegal. It's a 50 cc, and I have a permit for it. And I told him that. And he goes, he goes, well, move out of the way. Or I'm gonna beat your ass. So that's the first confrontation we had. And all of a sudden, he's calling, or I don't know if it's. Per, exactly him. You don't have to tell me, but saying that there's a gun involved. Okay. It, I'll tell you right now, it, it wasn't him. Okay. So, okay. Did he call? He called about something probably, right? About the bikes and stuff and whatnot. Yeah. Probably yes, so, but okay. it's legal. But it was a nudge. It was a, there was other people that were just kind of watching because they heard the commotion, and then they just seen it tucked in the back waistband as you guys were walking back to the house. Quick question. Yeah. So if he has, yeah. if, if he has a concealed carry permit, permit, or if anyone here, and they have a gun. Isn't that legal? Yeah, and you can open carry in the state of Utah, yes. right? It is. Yes. But there are some, but there's a difference between tucking it in your waistband. That is not open carry. That's, that is a form of, open carry is seriously, this is open carry. Yeah. Like it, there is no you, instruction. No, it's clear yeah. as day. Yes. I okay? understand. So that. once you tuck a weapon in like your waistband or anything. You have to have a concealed carry permit. You have to have a concealed, concealed carry permit. Yeah. Now the average Joe that's standing out here, if they see. They don't know. They, they don't know. Yeah. You can't. And all they know is there was an argument. Yep. And there was a, a what confrontation. They confrontation, possibly weapon. Well, yes. Yeah, we need to find out what's going on. I understand on. that. Yes, okay. I totally understand that. Like, you don't know if there's a gun being pointed at someone. Anything. Correct. Like, you could. You have to plan for the for the worst. Yep. So we just have to look at it. So and I understand that. Yes, but. It's, so, okay. So that's just where things. Were you are at. Were you standing at the front door with? I was standing on the sidewalk. So. Who was with him at the front door? Well, eventually everybody was at the front door. Well. First two, when two people both knocked on the door. So he was standing on the porch, and I was standing out on the sidewalk in front of your, your porch. And they, can you tell me why he tackled him into the house? Why he tackled no him into the house? No one got tackled. He was told to stop. I saw him with his feet. arm behind his back and twisted all around, okay, but that's not saying, tackling. come outside. That's not tackling. Okay. And I heard that something, that yeah. there was big smacks and stuff like that. So. It's a taser tag. Yeah, I, no, that's, that's a taser. I'm, not, I'm, not, but I know, but I, I'm, I'm still saying, talking. Can you please not interrupt me? Um, so I was... I heard all this stuff, and then all of a sudden, you guys are in the house. Did he allow you guys to come in the house? Okay. I'm not going to get into that with you. Okay, because you, cause you know that you guys came in illegally. If Franchek has a valid concealed permit to carry a firearm in Utah, he would be allowed to carry the firearm concealed, including in his waistband. Utah does allow open carry of a firearm if the firearm is two actions away from firing, for example, a semi-automatic rifle. This means carrying without a round chamber. However, if the firearm is concealed, then the aforementioned CFP is necessary. If someone knowingly lied about Mr. Francesca having a weapon, they could potentially face legal consequences now let's look at the very end of the discussion and see what happens after all of this so what's your name uh you already figured it out so i figured it out you already got it from him did we get his identification yeah he didn't give it to us you have his last name and you figured out my first name so okay. so i'll screen this for yeah, we'll screen no for disclosure by yeah. i okay i literally said i don't make statements you're like begging me for my okay, identification. But here's the thing. I'm, so you know, I'm not talking to you. You're required by law. Jack, let me explain yeah. something to you, okay, Jack. I'm not talking to you. Please. Jack, the reason we're here is because of you racing your motorcycle or your gas-powered bike or whatever. That has a, that I have a permit for. Okay. So I don't know why you're here. You're here. You you're here, here because he told me because someone called the cops saying that there was a gun involved. So you don't have to lie because I know that guy. No. We found out there was a gun involved later. No, when someone called. You, you got, he told me you guys no. came here for that. I have it on video. You, 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 I don't right. care. You guys right. can say whatever. Have a nice day, right? Okay, you too. Hey, he wants to Failure for identification? When my dad literally said his name is Jack Franchek? Okay. Now, ultimately, Michael was arrested and charged with interfering with an arresting officer. Failure to disclose his identity and disorderly conduct. But, however, these charges were dropped soon after the arrest. Following this altercation, Michael filed a federal lawsuit against Park City, alleging that his and his son's civil rights were violated. During the confrontation, Mr. Rodriguez was found in violation of five different acts of procedural misconduct. And after a detailed investigation, three Park City police officers officers were found guilty of a total of nine violations by internal affairs and for the very end Sergeant Cameron Thorpe was fired from the service.